It's Wednesday, May 3rd, 2017. It's time for Worth Point Chats with Harry Rinker. I'm Greg Watkins, the uh, editor at worthpoint.com, and it's time to talk with Harry, our expert on all things antiques and collectibles. How are you, Harry? Good. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. All right. Well, it's a, a fun to be back here on the air. We're, we're, we're a few minutes late getting started, but that's okay. We, you know me, I don't have any trouble talking about things. That's what right. a, what an interesting experience this week. Oh, went okay. out and went out. Well, I, every once in a while, well, I get called to consult with pickers. Now, yeah. this, is, this is an interesting phenomenon because, you know, today it's impossible to know everything out there in the trade. And a couple weeks ago, my good friend Barb Jersey, who uh, runs uh, Wonder Woman Estate Sales, called on me to provide some help for her in some areas where she needed my expertise. And there's a local picker that gets some stuff, and every once in a while he thinks he has something really good, and he's not quite sure. Okay, so he gives me a call to come out and take a look at it, which is great fun for me, okay, uh, uh, to do it. But in talking, in talking with he and his wife, the, the, the picker and his, uh, the, the, he and the wife pick estate sales, and then sell it on eBay, which is very interesting. But they've they've got it. They've got first of all a rather unique approach to this. What they're doing is they're picking high end stuff. They they decided that you could sell, you can buy something for two bucks and sell it for ten bucks, and you make eight bucks. But if you could buy something for Seventy-five or hundred dollars, and sell it for five hundred to seven hundred dollars. You can make a lot more money quickly. Right, that makes and, sense. And they, they they built this up into a really nice thing. What they've done is they've gone around to garage sales looking for decorative stuff. Uh, the, the woman had some decorative uh, background in the decorative field, and you know we talk about in the antiques and collectibles trade how decorative value is now probably the most important value of all out there. Right, we're selling more stuff for decor, decorator purpose and reuse purpose than we are for collective purposes. Okay, so uh, and and the interesting thing about this couple, they're willing to buy what I would call wounded warriors, things that are not mint, not room ready, uh, and pass them along to people that'll conserve them and take up what I got called for. I'm a little off subject. We'll get back to what I want to talk about. The beginning. <laughs> okay. But no, no, no. They bought they bought a wonderful 1880s globe on a stand. Yes. And they they did some homework on the net. And you know, one of the things about the net, it's a wonderful place to find out information, but it's also a dangerous place to go to find out information. Because if you don't know what you're looking at, or you think you know what you're looking at, and it isn't what you're looking at, you can get a lot of false information in a hurry. They, they, they bought this globe, and they called me up, and they asked me to come out to look at it. And, and and by bought, I mean stole. I mean, they got a really great price. They bought it at a really great price. So we came out there, and they said, well, we think it's a globe by this company. Uh, well, the company was called, let's see, uh, Joshua. Ah! Not Berlin. That's not right, but Joshua somebody. But anyway, long and the, long and the short of it was, it wasn't that company. So I said, give me a magnifying glass. So eventually we get a magnifying glass. And, 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 and I look around. The, this was a globe on a stand. It was a big stand, and then there was a globe, and then it had a wooden ring around it, and a you know, metal top over the top so you could spin the globe and so forth. Right, right. Anyway, you know, we started to start playing about dating it, so I got a look at the U.S. map. And the, the Dakotas were still one territory. So... You know, all of a sudden, while well, they became a split state and they, they split and became a state in 1889, so you know the map was before that, okay? Yeah. But, but when I'm looking around the rim, I, I, I said, you have a magnifying glass. Well, I don't understand. <laughs> you know, he says, yeah, I got this magnifying glass. I says, here, well, let me look around the rim. And I'm looking around the rim, and it says, manufactured by H.B. NIMS, N-I-M-S-S. Of Troy, New York, and I said, "This isn't one of those Joshua Globes. This is a Nims Globe. You've got some. By the way, you have some on Worth, but we can pull some up. But this one was on a unique metal stand. And so, you know, I'm I'm, I'm googling stuff, trying to find it. And, and finally, the woman says to me, and this is where you know, dumb shit. I should know this too. 
Uh, he says, well, sometimes I just Google Google Images instead of when I'm just looking for pictures. So I said, hey, let's let's try H H P M S N I M S H period B period N I M S in global images. Not only does images come up, but it, images come up of a catalog page, and there's this globe with this really neat looking stand, uh, and it was from an 1892 catalog. Now, what happened, of course, is that you know they used this stand the globe for there, and they just kept updating the map as time went on. Right. But, but you know we were able to do some bit over it. Now, unfortunately, uh, a lot of it was there, and the globe needed probably about fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars worth of restoration work. But the problem is when it's fully restored, it's going to be about a three, four thousand dollar globe. Did you find some NIMS globes up on Worth Point? Uh, yes, we've got four of them. Yeah. Now these, the ones on Worth Point, have a different stand on it, but they're fun to look at because it it would be fun to see the price. Just throw up up there if you would, please. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting it here. Hang on. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Now, now these are globes and. It, it, it's interesting. Now, now here is here is a case of how to use. I didn't, I wasn't going to go here, but why not go here? Yeah. This is a case to use WorthPoint to see how prices move in the marketplace, right? Yes. So you you do you have a structured from the highest to the lowest price? Correct. Yes. Okay. But look at the dates. The highest price date was what? Two thousand fourteen. And that was how much? Uh, Seventy nine. Hundred dollars, seven thousand nine hundred. Seven thousand nine hundred, right? Right. Right. Yeah, that was that was good, right? At the rest of the, yeah, don't get don't get confused by that, Franklin. That's uh, HP Dims. Okay, but it's got that kind of neat looking stand there, right? And yeah. the next the next one over there is, uh, I think, a year or two later. Well, it's two thousand eleven, and that sold for fourteen hundred. Right. Okay. Then go to the next one. That was 2010 eight, or 9? Eight, 2008, and that was $700. Right. And the next one over? It's uh, 2007 for 1025 Right. So look at how hot globes are getting. They're Old getting globes. Yeah. 19th century globes. It, you know, in good displayable condition. But nevertheless, there's, you know, you know, one of the things that we talk about that people don't do today is track the marketplace. Okay, and there, there. If you if you if you organize it by date, well, this one is interesting because if you organize it by date, you might get mixed reactions. But in this case, if you organize by highest to lowest, and you notice the dates almost correspond to that, right? You realize that the that the value goes up, right? Yes. Yes, and and globes are a hot commodity now. People don't. Now we're not talking about. Crap, crap glows from the 50s and 60s, although they do very well too. But 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 these, if you can get a, 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 eight, a 19th century or early 20th century globe on a nice wooden stand, or even a good pedestal stand off for a desktop or a, a floor pedestal, even better, uh, you're, you're, you're in really good business. Well, okay, so you know I me, mean? once I get started, I can't shut up. But let's go back to why I started this story in the first place. Okay. okay. Yep. So I went out to see them, and these these are a couple that got into selling on eBay and doing this in their retirement because they didn't want to have to sell their home and they needed certain money for taxes and they didn't have the retirement funds they needed, so they started doing this and and they make about five to I mean a good month for them is ten thousand dollars worth of sales based on about two thousand dollars worth of purchases. Maybe twenty five hundred, so they make seventy five hundred. Well, you know, okay. you, you do that twelve times in the course of a year, and you got over over hundred grand. Right. So you you know you can survive on that. So anyway, uh, we got talking about pattern glass, one of my favorite subjects, and we got talking about it because my good friend Barb Jersey, who we talked about earlier, Wonder Woman Antiques, has a uh, a, a ton of pattern glass in the current estate shell she's running at her. She has not only goes to people's homes and runs the state sales, but she has this gallery in Lansing, Wonder Woman uh, State Gallery there. And she had tons of pattern glass in the rosette pattern. Now, when I came into the, the trade and started doing Worman's Antiques and their prices, a third of the book was pattern glass. I mean, I remember the glory days of pattern glass. And 
when I when the sale ended here the other week, the, the sign said was there was a sign on the pattern glass says any any piece you want for six bucks and it was half price thing. So that meant any piece you want was three bucks. Right? Yeah. Here was this wonderful rosette pattern pattern a uh, rosette pattern glass uh, with the frosted bodies and wonderful rosettes and nobody wanted it. None. Nobody wanted it. Now one thing one thing I did when I was out advising her before the sale, there was a covered butter syrup and creamer and, and uh, sugar bowl with a lid. And I said, take those four pieces and put them on a silver tray and sell them as a unit because people like that. And by gosh, those pieces sold within the first hour of the sale, all right, for, for the full price on them. That was day one when it was full price day. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, so I'm talking to this lady. I'm trying to tell her this story. She says, well, that's okay. Pattern glass will come back. And I said, no, it won't. And I said, no, it won't. She said, yes, it will. You just have to wait long enough. And I said, not in your lifetime, not in my kid's lifetime, not in my grandchildren's lifetime, and not in their children's lifetime will pattern glass ever come back. Maybe, maybe if the glass factories all shut down, <laughs> we have to go well, back to recycle. All the glass factories shut down and go away, pattern glass will never, never, never revitalize to the point where it was in its, in its golden age. Now, what what happened? What happened here? Well, I'm going to tell you what. This was a revelation for you. You you may not be aware of this, but back in 1988, I wrote a book about how to how to how to invest in antiques and collectibles, or how to make money investing in antiques and collectibles, whatever that. Whatever. I can't even remember the title of my own book. But anyway, <laughs> how to invest in antiques and collectibles? Let's leave it go at that, right? Right. And but it was a book about market theory. And that book talked about the cyclical theory. Back in 1988, I believe that things would recycle because up through, up through the early part of the 1900s to 1980, things did recycle. You know, something would, would kind of go out of fashion, but then it, more largely because it was too expensive and then somebody else would, something else would take its place. And, but then eventually it got cheap by, by the standards of the marketplace and it would recycle again. And pattern glass recycled a couple times, and depression glass recycled a couple of times. But the mid-1980s and 1990s changed that. And that's when we got to the point where we began to realize that there are whole categories of stuff that will never recycle. And pattern glass is one of them. But I mean, Hopalong Cassidy will never recycle. I mean, nobody gives a crap about Hoppy anymore. Even I don't buy hoppy stuff anymore. And I had one of the largest hoppy collections in the country at one point. I sold it. Took a heck of a beating on it, too, I should say. But the point is that I've come to realize that nothing lasts forever. And it's an interesting, it's an interesting sense of perspective in collecting because when collectors get caught up in something or something's hot, they never think about what was it like 10 years before it got hot. And they never think what it's going to be like 20 years after it gets hot. Okay? Right. Because nothing stays hot for 20 years anymore. It stays hot for five years. That's a lot. Okay? So yeah, it makes sense because trends are they're, they're coming and going so fast that there's, no, possible there's no way to count on something lasting for more than even six months or, or if that. Okay. Now, since you said that, here is the hot tip trend from those two pickers. Are you ready for this? All right. Ottomans. Ottomans. Okay. Who knows why? I can't imagine anybody who collects 100 Ottomans, but they can sell Ottomans, old Ottomans, especially late 19th, early 20th century ones with cast iron sides to them and so forth, footstool. Right. Uh huh. Man, and I'm not talking piano so I'm not talking those twisty piano so I'm talking about an Ottoman, you know, with a fabric top and then these wonderful cast iron sides. They get three, four, five hundred bucks a piece for those things right now. Now, is that is that for designer purposes? Yeah, because yeah. yeah, nobody's collecting and no one's got a room and full of Ottomans. But here's here's the name of the game. You go to the estate sale, and most of those things are two bucks because nobody knows it there. But man, in the right marketplace, and, and these what's interesting about these these two pickers because they're focused on design. Okay, is that they're picking the hot design shit? I mean, stuff. 
It's only, it's only, I shouldn't. It's okay. We're on the internet. Pull out my personal prejudices to appear here on the show, but no. But anyway, but it's interesting because we, because here's the thing. You grow up thinking that the things that surround you will last forever. Okay. Now, stop and think of all the fast food places that have come and gone that are no longer here. Think of all the internet companies that are come and gone that are no longer here. Think of the department stores that you grew up as a kid that are no longer here, right? Right. Now, the question is, well, okay, but Sears Roebuck has always been here forever. No, Sears Roebuck started in the 1880s and it's, and it's gonna be gone by the 2030s or 2020s even, the way they're going. But but Marshall, take, a, take another cattle, one, one of the most famous catalog, Montgomery Ward. Yes. Now you've seen Montgomery Ward catalogs. They're that thick, right? They, so they were the thick ones. That's right. Gone. Out of the gone forever. Okay. If you if you don't develop a sense of perspective in, for antiques and collectibles, if if you are only caught up at the moment in the market, your your total sense of perspective is lost. If you don't have some idea of what happened before and some ability to see what's going to happen in the future. Okay. Because it's, it, I mean, you remember the beanie baby phrase, right? Right. Did I ever show you my, I own a beanie baby. Did I tell you that? Oh, you're going to love this one. It, well, I, it's back when you were the beanie meanie. That's right. I was the beanie meanie. I was the one that went on television and said, this will not last. You remember that? Uh, well, well I, I remember I, I wasn't around listening at the time, but well, yes, I, I, I'm they put a book on the Beanie Baby craze. I got to go get this. This is my favorite one. You know, uh, they've been asking me to write about one of my favorite things for the the newsletter. Here it is. There is a Beanie Baby on a cross. Can you see that? I, yes. Is that a skunk? It is a skunk on the cross, right? Okay. And this was given to me. It says, "Presented to Harry Rinker, Speaker of the Truth." From the dealers in central Indiana who refused to sell Thai Beanie Babies at antique shows. <laughs> Great. Now that they, they there was a, a book on Beanie Babies in the history of Beanie Babies that was done, and and they were going to put that in it, but then the discretion was a better part of valor. But <laughs> okay, right. But this this too shall pass, right? Yeah. And well, I, yeah. I, I think it gets very frightening uh uh recently I, i'm gonna interestingly enough for the newsletter i'm going to amy amy has been after me to write my favorite antique story right yes and i don't well, have how can you pick one well th that's the whole well that was well, she said that's what i should write about you know that it's not i can't have a favorite because of what i do right right but i i decided I decided that I'm going to send him an email, actually, uh, the next few days, and I'm going to suggest that what she do, what she what she does, is uh, that what she does is that she um, has a um, feature called my latest find. Okay. Because that's that's fun to write about. What's the latest thing you found that turned you on? Mm -hmm. right? And I think she'll get she'll get more responses to that kind of a pitch than she might. Right. Well, there's always the latest, right? Well, but there's all. But the thing about your latest find is that it, inherent in it is that it's a sense of adventure. It, it's a new treasure. Right. And, yeah. and, 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 and then you're going instead of trying to say instead of trying to say I have a treasure. Uh -huh. Which my wife says it better be her. Or I'm up to shit crick without a paddle, as they say. Uh, but you can say my latest find is a sense of adventure. It's something you didn't have before. It's something you recently acquired, right? Yes. And I and you can write about it with a passion and enthusiasm. Uh, so I mean, one of the things about I, I'm not going to talk about my latest find tonight because if I decided to do this. On the show with any frequency, I'm going to have to send you pictures of it. But I did buy something today. 
But it, I bought a wounded warrior today. Now, this is one of those experiments about does Harry have a head and his shoulders or not? Because I bought something that's going to be very costly to restore, but I'm hoping that between what I paid and what it's going to cost me to restore it, I'll still come up with a product that has value over those two costs combined. Now, I, I've often told you that sometimes I don't give a crap what it costs. I'll restore it because it's in better condition than I found it, and if it costs more than it's worth after that, and I die with it, what will I care anyway? But the point is that it, it's there. Well, anyway, I, I think it's, it, it sounds like a lecture tonight. You should have put the guru slide up. But the, <laughs> but the thing is, but the thing is that I think people, I think we need to take a more realistic look at this whole issue of longevity of collecting stuff, of how long certain things will be collectible, okay? Because I've been around the game too long to know that what's hot now may not be hot 20, 10 years from now and certainly may not be hot 35 years from now. And I think I, I, I think I talked to you last week about buying sheets of stamps at the, the state. So let me talk about that. Yes, we did. Yeah. We talked about this. Yeah. yeah. I mean, come on, I paid them 50 cents on face value. So, I mean, there it is anyway. Uh, so it's there. Well, believe it or not, besides the fact that the show's almost over, we do have a couple of objects to look at and we are fine only because I'm sick and tired of Greg putting it on my list. We are going to look at some blooming water <laughs> pistol, which Greg just persists on putting on the, these are the slides we're going to look at this week. And I keep saying, no, no, no. But I'm well, gonna, it's not no, so much no, no, no. It's just it's always the second or third one and we never get to it. Well, but, no, if it's the second one, I always make a point never to get to it because we have one ahead of it. But then, Greg, right. this week, just for you. Man, well, I think this is going to be worth talking about and I'll, I'll tell you why after after oh. we uh, introduce it all right well okay now let me tell let us tell people what this is first this is a water pitcher for cold water okay yes and, and it, it that's not cut glass that's pressed glass and that's not sterling silver that's plated in, in there right and i think you yes. have a section picture do you, do you show it with the inserting tube with the ice in it there you are now and and, the, and that's plastic, which means, yes. by gosh, it isn't fairly re it is fairly recent. Okay. Now Harry's approach to this would be put ice in there and put liquor in there instead of water, and it may have a much better function. It sounds like it would work better. Yes, it might. But you know, but here it is, and the question is, you look at it, right? Right. You look at it, and you say. But what's its value? Well, it's nobody's going to collect 50 of them, right? Correct. But yet at the same time, yet at the same time, it's got functional value. It's got reuse value. And, and not just that. Look at it. It says 50, 60s, maybe 70s. Okay, a more elegant time. I don't know if you could find this new today or not. I doubt it because I did but anyway, what did you find since you keep wanting to talk about this? Are you All right. So, so it shows up in the Worthopedia several times. No. It does. And what does it say? Well, and that's the interesting thing because uh, we've got that's one what, here. Oh, no. It says different things, right? Yes. That's so, right. So, so here is a vintage crystal glass cut pitcher, silver plate. Italy. Well, okay. you know how I feel about things made in Italy, but we won't yeah. go. Um, but down at the bottom, it says marked silver plate, Italy EP zinc. Oh, electroplated zinc. Yes. So it's not even silver. No, 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 no. It's silver plated on zinc. Oh, z oh silver on zinc. Okay. Yeah. E All right. All right. No, wait, slow down, slow down, slow down. No, no. Why this is a, this, this goes back to another discussion I had with his, these pickers today. They, 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 it's vocabulary. EP on any metal product means electroplated, right? Yes. Now you can electroplate anything. You can electroplate with gold or silver or, or brass or any one of a, a number of things, copper, whatever, okay? Yeah. So here it is. So it's electroplated, and you can also electroplate on different things. 
You can electroplate on copper. You can electroplate on Britannia ware. You can electroplate on slush ware. You can, you can electroplate on a whole variety of metals. Okay. So th this is telling you that underneath the silver plating is zinc. It's the zinc. Okay. The zinc. Okay. So, but it probably 47 bucks. That's a good price. And right. That, now that, was, that was last October. Now, and now wait a minute. Is that is it the same one that we're looking at here? This person may have sold it by now. No, no. no. So the, the next the one looks found. The pattern looks a little different on the on the body than the one we looked at, did it? It does a little bit. Yes. All right. Here because we. It's got this. It's got this little. Um, yeah, but the top is identical. The top is the same. Yes. All right. So now. Yeah. It's a Victorian wine decanter. <laughs> Silver Not plate. By the hair of your chinny chin chin, buddy. <laughs> well, that's what it's selling as. And it sold for for less than somebody who honestly described it. That's right. Victorian wine decanter pitcher, 14 inch cut glass, silver plated lid, handle diamond what oh. EA yeah, diamond pattern. Now, this one did not have the insert because I don't think you could sell a, a plastic insert as Victorian. I would say that would be a that would be a tough sell. Yes, yes. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Now. All right, but, but wait a minute. Let's go back. And look at the top of this thing, right? Okay. That, that top looks like look looks looks Victorian. That looks like some of those uh, tops of those Victorian water pitchers and some of the rest of that type of stuff. Yeah, and kind of like some of the uh, the beer steins as well. Yeah, yes, exactly. So if it would have said Victorian style wine decanter, then it would be right. Right, right. But Victorian, then, but Victorian, it sure ain't. And not for and not for twenty two twenty nine dollars and ninety five. Oh no, there it is again. Here's another one. That glass now, was again. Silver the glass plated. is a little bit different. The the pattern, but the but the top is the same. And it does have the insert in this one. Which, by the way, is an interesting point, too. You can, you can change this thing around and sell it in a variety of different marketplaces by doing one simple thing, right? Changing the bottom. Keep the top yes. the same and change the bottom. And, and you can have an infinite variety of number of pressed glass bottoms. behind. It's not cut glass, by the way. It's pressed mm -hmm. glass. Exactly, right, yeah. Yeah, but... But here again, too, shows the whole problem of people selling up there on eBay and other places and that not knowing what they're selling. Well, and that's sort of why I insisted, <laughs> I kept insisting that we have this little conversation. No, I know you do. Well, it's very good that you did because I knew, I knew you had, you know, if you, you know, this uh, nothing up this sleeve, nothing up that sleeve for you. You obviously right. had something up your sleeve. Yeah, and and you know those are just three examples. Uh, there are several more uh, versions of this picture right. with, with that top. But something else too, something else too, is that it does show the value of Worth Point because, but but it shows it in order to use Worth Point, you've got to use it intelligently, and that is that if you would have seen only that first one for forty nine bucks, right? Yeah. You would assume it was worth forty nine bucks, but yet we saw several pieces that sold through between twenty and thirty bucks, right? Yes. And oh no, there's one vintage. Are these later ones? Are these still additional later this is, ones? This is still that first page. Oh, all right, but 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 most of them seem to be selling through in the mid twenty bucks bucks, right? Yeah. So and so see. so now you have a realistic view, and again you've got the dates to look at them. Uh, and here, but you know, but there's another thing too. If you honestly describe a piece, buyers will have faith in that piece and they will spend the money. Yeah. Truly they will. So, <laughs> this one here is Victorian style lead crystal oh, and there silver it is. plate water wine tea pitcher. Still only sold for twenty four ninety nine. That was the same price as the one that said Victorian. No, the Victorian was two bucks cheaper. Right, right. Yes. See. So Victorian style here, but but they're saying that it's uh, lead crystal. Yeah, that's a different body on that one too. Yeah, I, I think I think the uh, the bodies were. Well, that came that came from my friend uh, Susie Summer out in Bozeman, Montana. She should. I, I should tell her to look at tonight's uh, Worth Point video 
uh, to see all this. She'd love this discussion. Yeah. But by the way, we'd like to discuss something other people own. Okay. That's right. So here's how you how you do this. You send an email to community at worthpoint.com. You ask about uh, you send an email to community at worthpoint.com. Uh, give us as much information as you can, how you acquired it, what you paid for it, size, markings, all the rest of that type of stuff. And photographs. The more photographs you send, the better. The more we're able to size, uh, mark, excuse me, marks, damage, anything. All those other things are, 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 are good to go. Um, community at worthpoint.com. Also, is there a topic you'd like me to kind of talk about? I mean, there, heck, there isn't any topic in the trade I'm not prepared to talk about. We'd like to hear from you, Greg, wouldn't we, Greg? We would. We would, yeah. And so uh, here we are again, another half hour has gone by with yet another picture we didn't get to tonight. But that's okay. That's we'll all right. Leave, we we'll have leave, retired we'll leave it, electroplated, we'll leave it of electroplated water pitcher. It'll never show up again. <laughs> yes, I, I am. I, I, I actually breathe a sigh of relief as like, I'll sleep better tonight knowing we did this. Yes. Well, right. and, and, and hopefully people have learned something. We, yeah, well, the whole point of the matter is you, you watch these videos. You take one point away from each one of them. You'll do very well. Okay? Yeah. Right. All right. Well, we'll be back next week at the same time as they say. That's right. Uh, talking about who knows what. But I'll come up with something. Who knows? So I'll be here in Atlanta, and you'll be in Michigan, right? Yes, we will. Absolutely. All right. Well, then, until next week, Harry, we'll say goodbye. Okay. Good night, sir. Good night.